Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. So we will continue with the topic of genetics. So let me start by telling you that at the beginning of life, when the fetus is developing in the mother's womb, um, all fetuses look the same. Okay, so there's no gender, if you will. But as the fetus continues to develop, our body begins to also develop parts that would typically associated with either being male or female. And the question is, what triggers the body to start to develop uh, this part? So let's uh, find out. So as the fetus continues to develop, it begins to produce different amount of hormones. So these hormones are produced by gonads, which are basically organs in the body. In the case of you ladies, uh, we're talking about the ovaries. And in the case of us gentlemen, we're actually talking about the testes. So the ovaries or the testes begins to produce uh, testosterone or estrogen. In the case of us gentlemen, we actually produce a higher amount of testosterone. We are also producing some estrogen, but we produce higher amounts of testosterone. In the case of you ladies, you guys produce a higher amount of estrogen. You're still producing some uh, testosterone, but you produce more estrogen. All right, so our bodies begin to produce testosterone and estrogen. And the question is, where does our body get the signals that says to produce these two hormones? For that, we have to look at our chromosomes. So we as humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. 22 pairs are what we call autosomes, which means that they're the same. It doesn't matter if you're a male or a female. But there's something very special about the 23rd pair. That's the one that we say that it determines the sex of the individual. And the reason for that is because those are different depending if you're a male or a female. So in the case of you ladies, you guys have two copies of the X chromosome. And in the case of us gentlemen, we have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So if the egg gets fertilized with the sperm that has the X chromosome, then the fetus is gonna de develop into a female. On the other hand, if the egg gets fertilized by a sperm that carries the Y chromosome, then the fetus is going to develop into a male. So in the Y chromosome, there are genes that signals the body to develop parts that we typically associate with being uh, a male. So in this picture, we actually have two karyotypes, which is basically a image of the 23 pairs of chromosomes that are found in our body. So in the case of a uh, female, you will see that the female has two copies of the X chromosome. In the case of us gentlemen, we'll see that uh, we have one X chromosome and Y, Y chromosome. So there are certain diseases or certain traits that are caused by genes that are found on the sex chromosome. So if this particular disease is caused by a gene that is found on the X chromosome, we call that an x linked trait or disease. Now, if this is a disease that is caused by a recessive allele that is found on the X chromosome, because you ladies have two copies of the X chromosome, that gives you guys an advantage. In the case of us gentlemen, because we only have one copy of the X chromosome, and that mutation is found on the X chromosome, then we don't have a second one as a backup. So in that case, you're going to see that um, X-link uh, diseases actually affect uh, males more than females. So we use a pedigree in order to determine whether a specific trait or disease is inherited in a dominant recessive or an x link fashion. So a pedigree is a visual representation of a specific, specific phenotype and how it occurs through generations. So in a pedigree, we use uh, squares to represent males we use circles to represent females. And if the square or circle is completely white, then that means we have uh, individuals that are phenotypically normal. If, however, it is a circle or the square is completely shaded in red, then that means that this specific individual is affected by that condition. If only half of the circle of the square is shaded, then that means that this particular individual is a carrier which means that it's phenotypically normal, but it carries that specific mutation. So when we look at this pedigree, 
we see on the top, we see Prince Albert and we see Queen Victoria. So we see that Prince Albert, so the square is completely white, so which means that he's phenotypically normal. In the case of Queen Victoria, we see that half of the circle is shaded with red, which means that she's phenotypically normal, but she carries that mutation. If we follow the pedigree, we see that some of the squares are shaded with red, and we see none of the circles that are completely shaded in red. We see some of the circles that are half shaded with red, which means that they're carries. So one of the things uh, that we can see based on this uh, pedigree is that it mainly affects males. So by that, we can definitely say that this is an excellent trait or disease.